Who is Suzume? Suzume lost her mother, her home, during a tsunami when she was four years old. She erased that day from her diary, forgotten it, trying to ignore her trauma. But we all know it will come back later, in the present. Suzume is us, who have an unresolved past. This movie is my absolute favorite of all everlasting time. The animation, the music, the wife, maybe the husband though, which is a talking chair. Everything is perfect. This movie is the most respectful romance I have ever seen. The most fair use of symbolism so the general audience won't be left out. One of the most beautiful animations to be ever made. And most importantly, the ending, which helps me. And you. I'm going to talk about my analysis of the movie with almost no research because I want to keep this analysis stay within the general view and, and not something that only an expert could understand. Even though this movie uses lots of symbolism. Spoiler warning ahead, go watch the movie first before watching this video. Peace. Suzume wakes up from a nightmare from the day she got lost after the tsunami, trying to find her mom. But she met someone. It's unclear if it's her mother. Suzume is uplift. Though, she can't remember what happened after that, then goes back to her usual routine. Then, she met a strange young man. A handsome young man. Cross his heart. Anyway, he also answered. He also asked a strange question. What a strange person, which makes Suzume can't help but be curious. That leads her to the door, and it's scary for her. Understandable, it won't be called a trauma if it's not scary. The door to the past is scary. However, you can't contain the past forever. It will come out at some point. No one can see your past. Only you can. She has no choice but to face it. She is not alone though. Sota is there too. And just Meteor here but he is also trying to deal with his own past. It is not told explicitly to the audience because just like how only Suzume can see her own past, only Sota can see his own. He was struggling alone, but with the help of Suzume, they managed to close the door. Sota accidentally gets Suzume involved with his problems. However, ultimately, that helps Suzume to finally get involved with her own as well, which she had been forgetting. No, I'm not imagining this, especially about depression and mental sickness. Often they are invisible. Sota is suicidal. He refused help from Suzume many times. He sleeps too much. He skips his teacher exam, wasting four years of study. And he goes to dangerous, strange, abandoned places by himself. And later when Suzume saves him, he says, why so specific? Why not calling Suzume's names or you came back or you saved me? It has to mean something. He was cursed to be a chair with three legs, a crippled chair. You know, crippling depression. When Suzume is hanging out with other people, Sota just sits it up. <laughs> Maybe this is a threat, but again, symbolism. Sota refused help from Suzume a lot of times, despite being a helpless crippled chair. Until Suzume insists on going with him, Suzume doesn't give him a choice. Still, he keeps falling. The worst part is, even after the journey they had, Sota left. He left Suzume alone.
Since meeting Sauta, Suzume keeps getting dragged with problems and even gets to board a ferry to another town as a 17 years old girl. Around this is not exaggerating when Suzume goes out of town with a strange man. Damn it, Sota. Suzume could have refused to go along if she wants to, though. Sota also doesn't want her to follow him anyway. Yet, she follows him anyway. Why? There are two reasons. Just look at Sota. He's a goddamn chair. A crippled little boy. Leaving him be would be heartless. However, that's what the chair means to Sota. But what does the chair mean to Suzume? Daijin knows exactly what he's doing when he cursed Sota to be her chair. That chair was left by Suzume's mother, the mother that Suzume has kept dreaming of searching for. This chair is the memento, the hint that Suzume is still holding on to her mommy. So, for Suzume, helping Sota also means helping herself. They go on the journey to close doors together. Sorry, auntie. Suzume met various people along the way who helped her on her journey, and she carries the proof with her. The clothes and bag from the motorcycle girl, the hat from the bar lady, and the boots from Sota. Motorcycle girl gives Suzume and Sota a ride during the second door. The bar lady gives them a ride during a rain. Serizawa gives her a ride in his second hand car. And when we thought it's finally time for walking again, Auntie Tamaki gives her a ride with her randomly spawned bike. Suzume can't get to her finish line without the help from others. It is said that the place behind the door is called Ever After, a place beyond time, where the future, present, and past exist at the same time. A place for spirits of the deceased. During the closing of the third door, Suzume gets dazed by the beauty of the Ever After. The beauty of the past. The place that is literally off her ground. She wants to go back to the past, entering the ferris wheel. Sota, who seems to know a thing or two about dealing with the past or trauma, warns Suzume that that place is not real. The past is dangerous. You can stay in the past, or you will fall. Suzume is back thanks to Sota's troll. Why Suzume, in the first place, can go to Ever After when she was little? I'm guessing that during the tsunami, Suzume is on the verge of dying herself. She might be dead if Auntie Tamaki didn't find her. Daijin. I'm still figuring out myself about what is Daijin really. For now I just think of him as Suzume's subconscious about the truth who appears to be harsh at first, but eventually we will learn that it was actually helping us lead the way. It claimed to be a god though. And while Daijin is Suzume's internal subconsciousness about herself, Sadaijin is her external subconsciousness about other people than herself, which shows in the form of her auntie Tamaki's less out. Sadaijin appears as dreadful in the form of a big predator. Suzume's Daijin fights it as a form of self-defense. However, turns out Sadaijin is not evil. It defeats Daijin, but Sadaijin turns back into a harmless cat again, and even cares for Daijin again like it used to, just like a certain someone. I still don't know why Daijin hates Sota though. Why it seems to be interested in Suzume? Why it instantly be shabby when Suzume hates it? Why it be good looking then when Suzume loves it? I have no idea. Remember what I said about Sota being suicidal? Suzume might have a similar thinking, or at least the same level of unappreciation. During the first door, Suzume helps Sota do the dangerous job, not something a young girl should do conventionally. Maybe it's just a good display of cowardice. During the second door, Suzume helps Sota again, which makes Sota ask her if she is not afraid to die. She answers, I'm not afraid. Still, a display of cowardice. Nevertheless, I dare to say it is not respectful of her own life. As a human being, you should be very afraid to lose your life.
Suzumen Sota managed to close the door so far. But there's just a time when what they are facing is unstoppable. Sometimes the door can't be closed. It requires something more. It will cross what you have in the present. Something that is equally big. In their case, Sota has to go. Suzume has to let Sota go. She knows she had to let him go because it has to be. It's the only way. And she did it. The courageous girl managed to let him go by her own hand. However, she falls. She is lost. She tries to go back to Ever After, but she can't. That's not how it works. Later, she meets Sota's grandpa, who reminds Suzume to accept this. Let him go. For real. But no. Suzume won't let him go. She can't just lose another person like in the past. That's why she refused to lose another in the present. So she goes out her way to bring Sota back. Suzume chooses to get up, cleans herself up, and lets Sota's boots walk her up. This time, Daijin, her subconsciousness, doesn't lead her. Daijin comes along, but it is silent. This time, Suzume leads the way, consciously. And this is still not something that Suzume can make visible for people to see though. Not something that she can just explain with words. Maybe the adults should respect that. But Suzume needs to know the invisible things that others hold as well. Everyone has their own Daijin, their own giant monster worm of the past. They need to be acknowledged. Only then, they can make peace. The end game, the final battle, symbolized as her giant Sadaijin fights her giant worm of the past. Suzume used all her strength to bring Sota, the hacking dummy, back. She even says things like trading her life for him, which I have said to you earlier that it shouldn't be appreciated. Nonetheless, I've been implying that suicide is bad, we should stay alive, but really, why should we stay alive? If we have no reason to stay alive, why should we be? There's no reason to. Unable to answer this question would be utterly hypocritical. That's why we have to have a reason to live. The moment Suzume appears before Sota, even after Sota has left her, Sota finally finds his reason to live. He will live for the girl that has been helping him with all this ordeal. Suzume is the reason Sota wants to stay alive. That's why he said, Suzume at the same time is no longer willing to die for Sota. This time she respects her life, so she could live with the boy that she has helped against all this ordeal. After all, she is afraid of the future with a Sota. She can only be with Sota if she is alive too. Sota is the reason Suzume can't afford to die. That's why she said, And just like Sota, sometimes we are helpless. Just like Suzume, sometimes we are helpful. Just like how it needs two keystones to defeat the worm, it takes two to defeat the past and live in the future. Just like how Suzume dressed like her mother, like a major woman, Suzume is now ready to face her inner child from the past directly. Even after all this time, for 13 years, this child is still looking for her mother. She still refuses to accept that her mother has gone forever. She still tries to run away, but of course, she can't. This is the moment this movie addresses why we are struggling with our past in the first place. Why something that has gone, something that doesn't exist in the present, is still bugging us. This is the moment Suzume speaks not only to a child that has lost her mother, but to every one of us of various circumstances, stable, unstable, helpless, helpful, 
alone or not alone, that the future will be fine. It may look scary, but eventually you will meet various people, have a laugh, you won't be alone. She is the proof to her past that she will be fine. Maybe, maybe I'm being hypocritical. Maybe the future won't be fine. Maybe there will be a new virus appears. Maybe the economy will crash for real. Maybe there will be another war. Maybe you won't be able to afford your own home with the current inflation and with the current wages. Maybe you won't have time. You won't have the time to spend with your family. Maybe you won't find someone to spend time together with. But what we might need to hear, what our inner child needs to hear now is that it will be fine. With this, you can lock your door now.